Here's the usual disclaimer, and it still applies, but fair warning, I do get into a rant at the beginning of this video. It's not my usual way, but I feel these things need to be said, not just concerning today's topic, but to various fandoms in general. So if you think you'll feel uncomfortable hearing semi-angry Hika, you can skip the rant by clicking the warning that pops up during the beginning of this video. Thank you all for listening. Hi guys, and welcome back to a new Mew Mew blog thingy. Today we'll be going over something that I personally wanted to talk about. Mainly because it's something that makes others groan, I love watching you guys squirm. Just kidding. Maybe. Don't worry, it's nothing too serious. It's about Tokyo Mimu a la mode. Wait, don't leave yet. I want you guys to hear me out. First of all, I've noticed that there are three types of Mimu fans when it comes to this little sequel. The first are those who find the story okay despite its flaws. The second are those who weren't fond of it, but are willing to check out a different adaption of it if it improved on and or expanded parts of the story. And then there's the last group. The totally closed-minded people that start foaming at the mouth at the mention of the title that say that they wouldn't watch slash read any adaption even if the story was better than the manga. Now most people would respond to such by saying rude or hurtful things, but I won't. Because I like to think myself as a nice person with at least a little common sense. Instead, I will say this. It's okay to not like certain things. Everyone has very good, legit reasons for doing so. But that doesn't mean you slam down others for liking things you don't. That's because they also have good, legit reasons for liking those things. Everyone's different and will like different things. I know this is shocking, but you can get along with people who don't agree with everything you do. Also, these things don't destroy your childhood. Your childhood happened. Nothing's changed about it. The things involved in your childhood are most likely still around. Also, Alamode's English translation came out a year after the main series. There's no way you can suddenly be a child who became an adult in only a year's time. And if that's your reaction to a sequel, or various other adaptions to certain franchises, all I can say is, even if you think of yourself as an adult, you certainly are behaving like a child. So please be nice. Remember that those you are responding to are people who are part of a fan base that you're involved in. You're supposed to be united by a common cause. I just find it sad and ironic that shows that are supposed to represent strength, love, and kindness can spark such hatred. Constructive criticism is good. Just spouting hate and picking on those who like shows or aspects of a franchise that you don't is not. Okay, rant over. Glad I got that out of my system. I'm really sorry if I made you guys mad, please forgive me, I just had to say it. Anyway, what I actually wanted to talk about is the story of Alamode itself, and by that I mean I'm going to take your guys' thoughts into consideration, going over various parts of the story that the fanbase wasn't very fond of, and finally answer the question, how do we make Tokyo Mimu Alamode better? Although I am going to skip over the majority of the stuff about Barry since I already went over how to make her character more accepting without it feeling forced. If any of you haven't seen the blog concerning Barry, you can watch it here. Basically what we have to do is expand the story, starting on the first arc with the St. Rose Crusaders. All we really got to know about them was a brief flashback that somewhat showed their powers and how they met Duke. It was only a few pages. So I think it would be best if each Crusader had their own mini-arcs, about three or four episodes each, highlighting each one's powers and their individual backstories, all the while hinting at Duke's origins until the final reveal near the end of the whole arcing story. And during all this, we could also get to gradually know Barry and Tasku as characters as well, as I already explained in the aforementioned blog about Barry. After the Crusader problem ends, it would be nice if they expanded on what happened to the aliens and their planet, which was something Pi asked Mia Ikumi in an extra gag page in the manga. So maybe there can be another obstacle concerning them, maybe certain factions not agreeing to leave Earth alone, or something else concerning the politics of their people. But this time the Mimus and our three favorite aliens can become allies. 
We could also learn more about Quiche Pie and Tart's home life too. And during this, Ringo could also join in as well. Since she was only in the PlayStation game, it would be nice to finally have her animated. Maybe with an OVA adaption of the game's story too. Also to go with this arc, I would put in something that a lot of fans have been wanting. Upgrades for all of the other Mew Mews. Ichigo is leader and all, but it was kind of unfair that she got all the good stuff. Then the main story's plot can escalate into something so big that the Mew Mews, aliens, and crusaders have to join forces to stop it. Also, there are some smaller subplots that need to be explained. First off, what did Ryo mean when he told Tasku that he was prepared to die ever since he started the Mew Project? Was he simply meaning that he would accept the consequences of his actions, or is the fan theory about him true? And if it is the latter, there could be a subplot about the others knowing and trying to keep him from meeting his cruel fate. Then there's Aoyama. In the anime and manga, it was implied that he still had powers. Although how much of his power he has was vague. In the manga, he was the one to leave the crumbling fortress with Ichigo, and it's implied that he still has Miwakwa inside him when he brought Ichigo back to life. He was also one of the first to notice that the Earth was under threat while Ichigo was with him in London. So how much power does he still have? Is his Miwakwa a source that can generate as long as he doesn't use it all at once? Can he still transform? And if his Miwakwa is potentially unlimited, can the Mew Mews use that to their advantage? There's also stuff that needs to be expanded on with the other girls. How often does Minto stay in contact with her brother? And how close will she get with Sakuro? Speaking of Sakuro, who was the mystery guy who died in her past? What was her home life like? How far does she go in her career? For Retisu, Pai or Ryo, we want to know! And for Booling, I want to see more stuff with her and Tart. Maybe with Yui being long involved. Although, I've always imagined Yui being being supportive of them being together. I also want to see an episode involving her and her father. It'll probably give everyone the feels, though. Also, we can never have enough Keiichiro. I want a more detailed story about his past. I want to know the other things he does when he's not analyzing things and baking. But yeah, I'm sure with enough thought, there could be a way to combine all of that. Plus the stuff from the blog about Barry into one full season. If I had tons of money, I would pay to get it made myself. And now you guys know how I would waste millions of dollars on Mew Mew stuff. And with that, I'll end this blog thingy. I also want to hear your own ideas of an Alamode adaption, so don't hesitate to write them down. And if you have any suggestions for a Mew Mew topic, put it in the comments below. Tune in next time where I talk about our favorite MacGuffin. Power pendant 